I was literally just texting you to check your fucking email, you uh, loser. Yeah. Hello, Bean. I don't think I've ever told you this one before, but I call him Duchess a lot. I'll be like, tiny Duchess. I don't know I why. That, I feel like that makes sense. Uh, Duchess is a really fun word to say, and I feel like we don't say it enough, and... Like spinster? <laughs> Suck my balls, Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> Are we spinster goes for, I think spinster goes for a man as well, doesn't it? I don't know. Bean says yes. Bow, 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 bow. Bow. Tony! Chill out. You gotta go back to the bed. Go over on the couch and go to sleep. He has his, his face pushed up against a mirror right now, barking at his own face. He's handsome, and he's intimidated by his own handsomeness. I know. Did you give him chicken yet? No, it's on the counter. He can smell it. He knows you're denying him. <laughs> Are we, is this all of this on? Are we going? Is this it? Yeah, this is it. This is what people can expect. <laughs> um, Inside yeah. jokes that only you and I understand. And dog barking. Dog barking in the background. I had a regular shirt on before, but I put on a Metallica shirt so I could realize my full form. No one's going to see this. It's not a video podcast. Cool. I can talk about whatever I want. What's the big topic of the day? Slurpees? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I was going to say we did a podcast earlier. We did. With, we did the Web Crawlers podcast. We did with Ellie Siegel, who is, honestly, I was having a hard time focusing because she's so pretty. I, I think they are, all three of them are really pretty. I know. I uh, I feel, I miss what it feels like to have like friends and girlfriends. I just have a dog and I'm alone. We just went to the dollar store and I lost my fucking mind. Both of us did because I haven't been anywhere. When you hear me on web crawlers, you can obviously tell that I miss talking to people. Like I just go. Like this yeah. is my chance to talk to human beings. Yes. So it was really good to talk to them. And I feel like we've talked about before how me and you's seven what is it what's the degrees of kevin bacon seven me and use use us us <laughs> use. Our, our degrees of separation are so crazy just like we we can't go anywhere in michigan without somebody knowing one of us and then literally like one or two degrees we know maybe everybody on the planet I'm convinced, and this didn't come up, I didn't bring it up because I didn't want it to de-evolve on the web crawler show, but I didn't bring it up. But Melissa Stetton is from mm -hmm. Kalamazoo. What? And so I feel like you probably ran into her at shows and stuff. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Weird. I know, I was thinking about it, like, after I dropped you off today and then as I was coming home, I'm like, our degrees, like, <sighs> like, the first thing I thought of was Liam, <laughs> who knows... George Harrison, right. what? Yeah. So you know, th so me through you knows him. That's crazy. Like my aunt went to high school with Madonna. Um, my aunt dated Glenn Fry in high school. Yeah, and just like through band friends and stuff. Like my friend drums for Kesha. Said Kesha knows fucking everybody. It's weird. You know the Gremlins guy, that guy in the. That Zach Galligan. Uh, yeah. He Life emails me every now and then because he wants to make a movie about the exorcism that I watched that I saw in 99. Yes. That his, needs to be a thing for sure. His mom, I think his mom and dad are both um, really well-known psychotherapists and psychologists. Mm -hmm. And so he's super interested in that. Mm -hmm. And he's always wanted me to write out like a huge and give me, and he wants like my notes that I took in 99. And he's like, we could turn this into a movie. But I always get weird about turning over my notes to people. Yeah, because you signed an NDA, right? With the Catholic Church. Yes. But I mean, like, <laughs> I have personal notes. And I feel like, I don't know. I also so, feel like yeah. now, too, at this point, like, I feel like NDAs are off the board. I feel like everybody just says whatever the fuck they want at all the time. Like, if you look at yeah. what politicians are saying, like, those are people running the country. And they're like batshit fucking Jewish space lasers. Oh. Like, I don't think that anybody would be shocked by what 
my notes were from a 20 year old Vatican exorcism. Yeah. I mean, I'm into it. He's, they're making a new Gremlin series for HBO Max, right? And he's on it. I think he does voice for it. I think it's a cartoon, isn't it animated? Oh, I didn't know that. I think it's animated. Well, that's a bum out. I wanted it to be real. I wanted to see furry gremlins. But... Did you like did you like the movie Gremlins? Obviously, yes. Did you like I, Gremlins 2? All I ever wanted was a Mogwai my whole life. Did you like Gremlins 2? Yeah. Yes. When there was like Batman Gremlin? Yes. The female <laughs> gremlin, yes. The secretary gremlin? <laughs> yes. Who's just punching oh. a keyboard? Yes. G F G A B C D E. All of them. So do you want me to tell you this story that I've been holding from you? I guess so. If we're done talking about gremlins and six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Who's the, who is the most who is the most famous person that you either know or are one away from? Um, I mean, I have friends who like tour managed Marilyn Manson before. Um, I, one of my friends tour manages Justin Bieber. I don't know, like as far as like running into people, I've met movie people. I've met Kristen Bell in the bathroom at my work before and made a fool of myself. Um, I mean, I mean, if you, this is what I mean. If yeah. you. Like wanted to contact somebody? Yes. Yeah. Who's the most famous person that you could contact tonight if you wanted to? Travis Barker, uh, Tom DeLonge. I don't know. I don't. I don't feel like there's anybody I couldn't contact if I wanted to, and I don't think there's anybody that you could neither. I uh, well, I, I guess I also feel like in this day and age you can contact anyone, right? Like most people are on Twitter and stuff. Yeah, but me and you have a very nothing is impossible vibe all, at all times. I feel like not everybody operates that way. Like I will straight up get arrested if there's something I want to do. I don't care. Um, not everybody operates that way. Uh, it's it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. That whole thing, like forever. <laughs> <laughs> and how many times have you been arrested living that type of lifestyle? Ugh, knock on wood. I feel like I've never been arrested, but have I done things to get arrested and not gotten caught? Yes. Not going to talk about that now. Not going to put that in the streets. Is it, well, there's got to be a uh, statue of limitations, right? Oh, I did. This is... What is... Have, okay, wait. That's better. That's better than... This is really that's, good. That's better than what, what famous person <laughs> could you meet is... What crime could you go to jail for except the statute of limitations? Has this is on. perfect. That I don't tell anybody ever. Uh, when I lived in New Jersey, uh, a friend of mine, Megan who I'm still friends with through Facebook. There was this rich neighborhood in New Jersey where I guess just all stars lived in like one sub. Uh, and we didn't really know who, it was just like a legend. So we're like, we're gonna get in the car and we're gonna go to the sub and we're gonna find somebody famous. I don't know what we were doing. So uh, we got the great idea to like, we didn't know how to figure out where they lived. So we drove through, this was at night to like midnight. We drove around the sub and we got the super illegal idea to reach in people's mailboxes and read their mail. Listen, I know I'm going to get arrested after this podcast. I don't think there's a statute of limitations on postal. I don't think so either. I don't know why this is happening. So anyway, sorry. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so of all the people anyway, so we're driving around and a lot of the, this was at night. So a lot of the um, mailboxes were empty. So we're driving along, driving along, roll up. And all the houses were like set back. So the, the mailboxes were like at the street. So we would, I would, she'd be driving. I'd yank one open, pull it out, no mail, blah, 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 blah. So we finally hit a mailbox with mail. I reach my hand in and I have something and I'm like, go, 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 go. So we get out of the sub, get to the gas station. I wouldn't even look at it. Turn on the dome light, Mr. Wyclef Jean on the fucking piece of mail i still have it i still have it and it's not like junk mail i feel like I want I, tag why john who's listening to this 
Listen, I feel like I cost this man some money. Um, <laughs> 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 so you open it and it's literally like a laid out contract from like Sony Music or something. And it's like, blah, blah, blah. First album, X amount of million dollars. Next thing, it is all laid out and it's got his name and I fucking took it and I still have it. Um, so anyway, so then there's us in the car losing our shit. So she's like, I need something too. So we went back to the mailbox and she took a thing too. And it was like, it was an invitation to a party in New York that was on a CD. Like, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know whose idea this was or how it would have worked, but we're like, do we go? <laughs> but we didn't go, but we both got a thing and... I still have it and I'm going to get arrested now. So you mixed a famous yeah. person and an illegal thing. I know. I've I don't... always wanted to tweet that story, but I'm like, I'm going to get in trouble. You can't steal mail, but we, whatever. This was a long time ago. So, oh, well, if he wants it back, he can have it. I don't think I ever did anything illegal that involved a famous person. Well, <laughs> you just baited me into the story. And no, I'm saying, told... like, you have a famous person illegal story. I don't have a famous person illegal story. I did a lot of illegal stuff yeah. when I was a punk rock kid. Yeah. Well, you have a Gigi Allen. You have many Gigi Allen stories. Yeah, but none of that was illegal. I mean, uh -huh. when I... It so what you shit on people. But I Is didn't. That... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah... A friend of mine, he, I remember this, but I, I still like, I still feel, do you feel bad about your illegalness? No. I do. Because mine was like random illegalness and like harmful. I had a friend, Jeff, and he was dating a girl and she was cheating on him. And he was, and then he found out like her parents knew, but her parents hated Jeff. So they didn't tell Jeff, like he would come over and they all knew she was cheating on him. Oh. And it was so like the whole family was involved in this cheat. And then Jeff found out and we were at Denny's one night and he was like, fuck this family, fuck that girl, whatever, whatever. And I was, you should go fuck them up. Go do something like damage, punk rock, yeah, like, whatever you want. And one of our friends was like, you should put sugar in the gas tank of all their cars. Mm. And we were at Denny's. We dumped out all the salt and we started like emptying all the sugar into the salt containers so we could take sugar with us. So we mm -hmm. got a ton of fucking sugar and we drove to their house and <laughs> we're, we had a hose and a funnel and we started dumping sugar into the tanks of all of their cars. There were three cars in the driveway oh. and it was, this is like three o'clock in the fucking morning and we're standing there and we're like, well, that was anti-fucking climactic. Like <laughs> you pour a bunch. And now we're never ever going to see, he's not talking to her anymore. You know what I mean? Like they broke up. We're never even going to see like the ramifications. And as like that thought is that conversation is happening, we're I'm standing maybe 10 feet away from their house. And in front of their house, they have all of these like bushes and shrubbery and stuff like that. And they have giant ornamental stones in front of the bushes. And I walked over and I picked up this giant ornamental stone and I walked up onto the front porch and threw it through the plate glass window. Boosh! Huge fucking explosion. The glass shatters everywhere. And we took off running. We ran all the way back to Jeff's car. And there we go. Jeez, you guys. Yeah. I was not a nice person at one time. <laughs> oh, I know. You've mentioned before. I wasn't either. I'm like all love and light now. And I was a fucking asshole for a long time. I still feel bad about breaking that window. I can hear her father screaming in the background as we run. I can hear like them in the house going crazy. Blah. I mean, stuff happens. It's a window. One time, uh, this doesn't have to, This, I guess this isn't illegal. This is just a funny and it reminded me of that story um, or of this story. Uh, I was in Rochester with a bunch of friends and we were getting drunk one night and we were teenagers. And we were stumbling through this neighborhood going toward where they had built new houses that weren't occupied yet. And as we were walking through the snow, this kid, Jeff, I'll just say his name is Jeff Smith. How's that? Because uh, I don't know if he's still around and what's going on with him. But anyway, so this Jeff Smith kid is like, we can't go past that house over there because that's the witch of Rochester. She's like psychic and like she knows everything that goes on. And I was like, whatever, we're all drunk and walking through the snow and laughing at him. And he's like, a serious dude, like she's a witch and she'll like curse us or something. 
And so we were walking and Sean, one of my friends was laughing at this witch story. And Sean picks up this huge, makes a huge snowball with like a whole bunch of like ice and stuff in it. And he stands back and he chucks it at this, when this witch's house. Oh and I, I remember in the darkness, I remember like seeing it fly and it hits one of her windows and breaks like, whoosh, and we all start running. And as we're running off in the distance, I hear a woman's voice going, Jeff Smith. I know that you, Jeff Smith. And he started crying. My friend's crying. He's like, no. she knew it was me. I'm going to be cursed. And then we didn't go to Rochester for like six more months. We Did up. his skin melt off? Is no, he, he was okay? fine. He was fine. But it was crazy that she knew it was him. Wow. <laughs> What's the thing you wanted to tell me? Oh, yeah. Okay, so you know I'm like a Facebook marketplace freak. So every once in a while, I'll just do like certain buzzwords on there and see what's on there. So the other day, what was I watching? I don't know. I was in like serial killer mode. And first of all, I don't have many serial killer artifacts at my house. I don't, I don't like love standing serial killers. There's two that I'm very interested in only because they were smart. And I feel like I would have fell for their bullshit. And that's Charles Manson and Ted Bundy. Everybody else is pretty gross. Gacy's gross. Ramirez is gross. Everybody else is fucking gross. They don't have anything to me that's like smart or admirable or They're all pretty any, gross. you know what? Yeah. But the other <laughs> ones, I'm like, I fucking know. But um, just like them as a whole, like could, we're passable. If somebody's passable, that's very interesting to me. So anyway, so for whatever reason, I searched serial killers the other day and there was a guy on there selling letters with the with the envelopes with the postmarks super legit and he had them they were originally for five hundred dollars and then he had a mark down to 150 and then i'm like you know this for a fact because i've done it when in your presence but i'm like the queen of haggling so i message him i would have paid the 150 but i was like i shouldn't be spending this money during a pandemic blah blah, blah. and he's like how about a hundred and I couldn't even see all the stuff he had. I just knew from what he was showing that it would be worth it. So I'm like, fine, let's do it. So I sent him the money. The letters arrived in like two days. So what I have is there's one that's a 43 page confession from a guy named Philip Jablonski, which I'm not that familiar with. I Googled him. I didn't read all of it yet, but he's a big deal. This envelope with the Philip Jablonski letters, it says, please be warned that the 43 page letter is very nasty and violent yikes i didn't read it yet anyway so that's the one there are two letters from david berkowitz that i have in my house now there's one from gary ridgeway green river killer that's insane there's one from tex watson manson family insane um and then the last one is from mark david chapman so I got all those for a hundred dollars. That's crazy. Do you die? That's crazy. Like I opened them the other day. You know how we are with like setting energy and like how every single time we come home with something, I'm like, here's going to be the thing to haunt my house. And I like set them in the dining room and I'm like, I like pat them on the top of the stack and I'm like, you guys be good. <laughs> like here we go. So, but yeah, they're all in the original envelopes, all stamped like, you can tell this guy, he's just, and I asked him, I was like, I could tell he was just like a normal person. I was like, what made you do this? What made you write to them? And he's like, I'm like a autograph hound. And he sent me pictures of like his office and he's got like 20 different uh, autographs from like Nirvana and Pearl Jam and Soundgarden and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, so being like an autograph person, I was just like, what would happen if I wrote to these people? And the letters are like, they're, I, it's crazy. And they all write to him by name. I don't want to say his name, but, um, and he was very sweet and he's like keep in touch and i'm like i just know like the value i think there's one berkowitz letter on ebay right now and it goes for like 500 dollars. and i've got two and all the other ones and there's no chapman letters and there's no other ones by the other people so i'm like i i've had to work the last couple of days so i haven't even dug into them yet but they're like long handwritten so Crazy. I, have, I know i feel so lucky i like and again i'm not like a psycho like i don't want to like ooh, like I'm not like a fanboy, but it's it regardless of if stuff is gross or hard to read or hard to handle or hard to process, it's still history. And I feel like somebody has to save it, preserve it. And I didn't want them to fall into the wrong hands. 
So I'm like, I have to snatch these up. So I did it and now they're here. That's the big problem with collecting certain things. Like, you know, like I collect anything that's UFO related, especially like printed ephemera, like written letters and postcards and stuff. Like that stuff is just important. It is a part of history. And I think the thing with serial killers too, it's not so much that people are fans of them. I think that people first and foremost, whether they understand it or not even, like I think that people are, I think there's something in human beings where we're fascinated by the fact that one person can do something that not only is horrible, but their name becomes known. Like they become a figure because everybody in the world is trying to be someone Mm -hmm. sure murdering people is you know the easiest way to become famous but people get murdered all the time and you unfortunately obviously and you never hear who their murderer is and so when you hear names like mark david chapman or david berkowitz oh you know who that fucking person is Mm -hmm. that's crazy yeah oh i was gonna say something i forgot i only collect autographs from horror and sci-fi movie people and that's old ones you know what's really crazy is i was looking at an autograph i have from this guy named david farcom who was in the original fly movie with vincent price Mm -hmm. and that was from 2016 and i started looking through my autographs because i collect old movie stars right and it's crazy at least 70 percent of them are dead now just like in the past five or six years Mm-hmm. and it's crazy like uh, most of them like I just wrote to their home like no one even knew they were there I know I mentioned to that guy with the serial killer letters I'm like my friend does the same thing as you do and I feel like the people were just really happy to be remembered or thought of for like a second and they were more than happy to send something back but what I was gonna say about the serial killers too is like as a woman specifically I think all of us are just so interested because it's educational and it's like There's something about learning about your worst nightmare and being prepared and like the more every little nugget that we learn about this stuff, it's like, okay, so I wouldn't put myself in that position. I wouldn't do that. And there's something about like Bundy specifically or like Manson, but those people were runaways and they needed food and they needed somewhere to sleep. And then with Bundy, it's like, if I saw that guy at a beach and he had, I know how I am, I'm a bleeding heart. If he had a cast on, I'd be like, yeah. And he was like, no, help me into my car. I would a hundred percent fall for it. And there's something like so creepy about that. So it's endlessly fascinating to me. There's just like certain ones that I'm like not fascinated by at all, but. You know what's weird is in the ever evolving world of me understanding things as an older man that I didn't understand before, I think about, okay, so this is probably 10 years ago now, but I was coming out of Gasolina Alley and I was was not drunk. I had, it was one of those nights where I just kind of showed up and hung out and didn't really drink and just like had one drink and that was it. But I I was walking back to my car and there was maybe like, so I would have been probably 39, but there was a girl who was a fresh 21 or 22 and this is like three o'clock in the morning Mm -hmm. and she's wandering around the parking lot by the post office and she's can someone help me find my car out loud like loud like she's can someone help me find my car i can i come find my keys like she was just like gone and wasted i sat there for a while and i was fuck like should i call the police like what could i do but even at that time like i didn't even think to call the police Like, again, this is evolving traits in me. Like me now, I would call the police and be like, you have to come and get this girl. But at the time, 10 years ago, I literally like walked over to her and I was, hey. And she was like, hey, I can't find my car keys. I'm like, okay, do you live around here in Royal Oak? And she was like, yeah. And she gave me her full address. She was like, blah, 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 blah. And I was, okay. And I remember telling her like, don't ever do this ever again. You're very lucky, but I will drive you home. And she was like, okay. And like walked back to my car and got in my car. And as soon as she got in my car, she fell asleep in the passenger seat. And I was like, fuck. But she had given me her address, which was really close. Yeah. I drove her to her house and I like woke her up and she was like, huh? And I was like, you're home. And she's like, oh, thanks. And she like got out and like fell out of my car. I watched her go up into the house and then I drove home. And then the whole ride home, I was like, man, There are so many fucking ways that could have gone sideways. What did you just do trying to be a nice person? She could be like, that dude got me in his car and raped me. 
I, I don't know who he was. Like, who knows? Like, there's so many fucking ways. Like, if I wouldn't have been me, mm-hmm. it could have been a fucking nightmare situation. Yeah, she like, could be changing somebody's basement right now. Yes. Yeah. But now it's crazy because I would just call the cops. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure I've been that drunk before and luckily gotten home. I don't know. Or I don't even like, I think about now, like even like just walked her back to Gus's because they would have let her sit inside. Like yeah. I think, but in the moment it's like, oh, here's a person in distress, help them. Yeah. And then like, after you help them, you're like, oh, that was the wrong fucking thing to do on so many different levels. I think another thing that's fascinating too, that I don't know if anybody else is fascinated by this part, but um, how, especially serial killers of the seventies and eighties, Bundy, whatever, operated and got around because there was no cell phones or technology or uh criminal profiling um so bundy killed people in like a bunch of different states and then went to florida when he got to florida they didn't even know who he was right and he wouldn't say like by now they would know and you would have your gps on your cell phone and blah blah blah. so it's like uh, it's crazy to think about like they just got around well that's you know i don't know if you ever heard me talking about this but i i the, when I first met Johnny Hauser, who mm-hmm. runs the Valeska Axe Murder House, mm-hmm. he was talking about, obviously, the Valeska Axe Murder House. And I started talking about the uh, Benny Evangelista case in Michigan. Yeah. Yes. And then we started researching it. And like between the time of Valeska and the Evangelista murders in 29, like there were hundreds of axe murders all across the United States where no one was ever caught. And I was like, oh, fuck. Like, of course, because how would anyone know? It took news yes. weeks to get across the country. So if this person was hopping on a train going from Detroit to Chicago, which they could do in one day, mm-hmm. like they were getting there faster, like a week faster than the news and kill someone and then get on a train and go to Louisiana and kill someone in Louisiana. And then you could just do that your whole life and ne- with no fear of being caught because it was the turn of the century. So it's like, People would ask you your name and you'd tell them and then they'd say, you have any idea? And you'd say no. And they go, okay, that's fine. Literally like. Yeah. Yeah. H.H. Holmes had what? 10 different aliases. Nobody yeah. knows what your real name is. No. Um, isn't the Lizzie Borden murder also lumped into that whole axe yeah. murder train yep. scenario? Yep. I don't doubt that for a minute. They're all very similar. When we were at the Velisca, I was telling somebody about Velisca the other day and I'm like, there's axe prints in the ceiling still. Like, that's crazy. I know that, I'm, and as a historian, like, I know that this makes people mad and stuff, but like with the Evangelista murders in Detroit, that house was demolished after the police were doing everything that they needed to do. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I really do think like in some instances you need to just get rid of the property. They did that with Dahmer's property, right? Yeah. They like yeah. tore it yeah. down and re readdressed the whole street and built yeah. a new building and H.H. Like Holmes you, too. The the whole murder castle is gone and now it's a post office. Yeah. Like you've got to get rid of it. Yeah. yeah. Because the other thing is too, like you said, like you didn't want the letters to fall into the wrong hands. Yeah, I, I've told you before, like, I wanted to start a GoFundMe because the evangelistas don't have uh, a marker. They're buried without a marker. And mm-hmm. I wanted to raise money to give them one. But then I started thinking about it. And I was like, fucking people are going to go there. Mm-hmm. And who knows what kind of fucking weird, dark shit they're going to put there. So just let them sleep in peace. Yeah, agreed. But that's crazy. You got that stuff. I know. I know. I'll let you, maybe next time we talk on here, I'll let you know more of what it says. I, I skipped write, a couple Why don't you of, write to Berkowitz now? I know. I think I'm going to because I have the exact address and cell number now and I can drop this guy's name that he wrote to before. So maybe he'll write back. But I watched, there's a super interesting, long, semi-recent uh, interview with him on YouTube that I watched and he comes off super, no, obviously he's super into Jesus now. Uh, I think the Gary Ridgway one that I have here is he's super into Jesus now too. I don't know what that turn is, but, and then I'm scared to read this Jablonski one. I Googled him and he looks terrifying, but I don't know much about the story, but he killed like, I want to say he killed like 30 or 40 people. Like he was a big deal. I just don't know the story that well. He's still around, isn't he? Who? Wait, say it again. Tex. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Tex is still around, right? Yeah. Yeah, It says on this letter that the Jablonski guy is dead. I want to say Mark David Chapman is still alive. 
Berkowitz is still alive. Tex is still alive. I don't know if Gary Ridgeway might be dead. I feel too like a lot of those guys are slammed with letters now because of Mindhunter. Oh, yeah, probably. Right? Like there's a ton of people writing to them. Maybe. I Yeah, I don't know how they pick out who to write back from. I got, I was writing to Manson for a while and I got a postcard back, um, like an Atla postcard and it's got the um the Corcoran prison return address on it and stuff but it's not like a a writing from him but on his weird website star his whoever she is girlfriend whatever she said if you ever get anything back from Anson it's by his direct like he asked for that to go to that person so I feel lucky that I got anything so I have that but he didn't write on it or anything but it has like the return address of Charles Manson and so it's pretty sweet but really into that's it. all i have you were just you were just really though a lot of people need to know you were just really into manson's uh musical stuff right i know i am i am he his life could have went a lot different i don't know i know <laughs> like a short man syndrome i don't know what happened with that dude it could have went a lot different like the beach boys guy made fun of his music and then everything went left and nobody still knows if he did anything personally it's just well, then again, I should, we, well, that brings up that discussion that you and I have had, which is even John Douglas doesn't think that Manson was responsible. Like, Good. yeah, he thinks yeah. that Manson claimed credit because he had to, to keep control of the family. He had to make it about himself and had to keep up that persona because mm -hmm. that's what everybody thought he was. And without that persona, he would have been nobody, which was the thing he never wanted to be. Right. The only thing that I've ever read to the contrary was between the Beach Boys thing and like the fine, like uh, Sharon Tate killings, there was one record guy, I don't know if he was a writer or a producer, whatever, but so he went there to threaten that guy for a deal. I don't know if he cut his fingers off or something or they killed that guy, but I feel like he's the only one that people trying to pin on Manson. Like he actually either fucked with or murdered that guy. But that's never been proven. But the uh, the other, the obviously the end ones, he didn't do anything. But I think there's like one that like he might have done. But I don't know. That, that sounds uh, very informational. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> crazy as I feel like when I read about it, I can like see the guy's house in my head. It's weird, but I don't remember who he was. But let me like just pivot away from serial killers right now because there's something else that I've been wanting to bring up with you that I think is super cute. Um, I saw it on TikTok, which is embarrassing. Is it unicorn soap? Absolutely not. No, that unicorn soap that we found today is sick as fuck. Um, don't make fun of my sparkly unicorn soap. But no, there was this TikTok that said there's an old witch folklore, which I don't know if this is true, that every time one of your plants dies, it is believed that it absorbed a curse for you. Isn't that the cutest thing you've ever heard? So I've heard, I've heard that before. I've never heard that and I love it because I kill plants all the time. <laughs> Why do you have so many curses coming at you? <laughs> no, why? I've heard that before and I think that that's cool, but I also feel like I'm terrible at growing plants. I know, me too, but what if? But I mean, like, my house doesn't have a lot of sunlight in it. Me neither. At all. And so I, I never am sure if the plant is getting enough light or it's getting love because I'm talking to it. Good job, buddy. Like, when I, I see it. I know. But I feel but like I'm just, I'm just not good at it. I know. I'm not either. But I like to think that now. It makes me feel less bad at what I'm doing. It just makes me think other people are bad. I have a good relationship with the trees up north. Yeah, they wave at you. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, like, the plants in my house just aren't satisfied. I know why. I try. Because your house is filled with, like, some kind of horrible carbon monoxide black mold. It's not. Yours is. <laughs> Mine is for sure. I know. It's all creeping up from my fucking scary cellar. I know. Where I put my paintings so they absorb sadness. In the fucking crawl space? You don't know that? No. Did you ever see that giant clown painting that I gave to uh, Tyler Strand? I don't want to talk about that, but sure. I left that in the crawl space for like a year and a half so that it would absorb neglect. 
And you gave and I, it to Tyler? He loved it. <laughs> so I gave it to him. Let's just shout out Tyler Strand right now. He'll be so happy. I miss people. I miss Dana and Greg. I miss Tyler. Um, we also have to say thank you to Amy Wallace for being an angel and supporting us all the time. True angel. Shout out to Amy Wallace. Do you want to hear another weird thing I've been meaning to bring up to you? <laughs> I took notes, okay? You took so, notes? Kind of, just a couple. You're way um, more professional than I am. Uh, I'm just drinking a glass of wine. I'm literally drinking, okay, I invented this thing and our, our good friend, okay, Mark's wife, Tina, me and her drink before shows and we have a drink that I made called Go Go Juice. And it is Tito's vodka and wild strawberry caffeine crystal light. So that's what I'm drinking right now. Go go juice. Shout out to Tina. Is that good? It's so good. I'll make you one next time you so go. My go go juice, when I used to have parties back in the day when people could be in a house yeah. together. Weird. Uh, yeah. Weird times back then. <laughs> Weird times. I was thinking, wait, before I tell my story about that, you know what's funny is I was thinking the other day, why do, right now, because of pandemic and quarantine, why do I have more than one plate, one fork, one spoon, one knife, one glass of water, and one coffee cup? Like, I have all that other stuff in case someone comes over and no one is coming over. No, never. No. Why do I have so many clothes? I've put on the same outfit for a year. Right. So anyway, when I had people over, my mom back in the 70s, she used to make a uh, punch for her parties. Mm -hmm. And so what she would do is she would cut up strawberries, pound of strawberries, and mm -hmm. she'd put them in a big, we, she had that 70s crazy punch bowl. And she'd put the strawberries in there and then she would put an entire bottle of vodka on the strawberries and let them soak for a day. Yum. That was the beginning of the punch. So you put a pound of strawberries sliced up in a bowl with cheap vodka. Then the day of the party, you take that out of the refrigerator, you add another bottle of vodka, mm -hmm. a two liter of ginger ale, a Yum. two liter of Hawaiian punch, and then a uh, half gallon of orange or rainbow sherbet. When are we making this? It's the amount of alcohol and sugar <laughs> fucks you up so bad. Like <laughs> people would come over to my house and they'd be like, this is delicious. It's like creamy and fruity and you can't taste the alcohol. And I'm like, it is all fucking alcohol. And I had, I was dating a woman at the time. This is in like 2000. And I had one of my parties. And I, I'm just now remembering this. It's so funny. And we had a party. Uh, the woman I was dating was living with me. So her mom came over and was drinking that punch like nonstop. And her mom at the time ended up hopping my neighbor's fence, like running through people's backyards, hopping fences. This like, my, I was like, she is wasted out of her mind. And, but it gets you fucked up. It's the sugar. It's crazy. The next morning you feel absolutely terrible well that's okay when we have our garage sale that we keep planning on making we're gonna make that yeah for and sure just talk with people all day okay okay it's a yard sale though social distance okay but you have like a garage that'll be half open and then we'll just sit on the grass i can't open my garage door you can't no well oh, i didn't know that okay fine it's a yard sale you know when they set my van on fire yeah they. When my van, when the, <laughs> arson, what? Like the government set your van on fire. Well, the arsonist, when the arsonist set my minivan on fire and it caught my garage on fire, it melted my garage door. Yeah. And so I got my garage door to close, but then inside the garage, the support struts, struts for the garage door warped from the heat of the flames. Oh. So it won't raise up again. And then my insurance company only gave me enough money to like fix the roof of my garage not to fix my garage door. So I never fixed well, my garage door. I feel like we could still set up in there and then just leave that side door open if people want to go in there and browse. People don't want to come inside. It's quarantine. Oh God. Okay, anyway, let me segue into the other story that I was going to bring up to you. Our friend, Amy Bruni, who was on Ghost Hunters and now There's she's- There's a lot of name dropping in this uh, I pre know. premiere I episode. It friend. starts off with- it starts off with us talking about all the famous people we know. It's a lot of so name dropping. So <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Talk, 
I our friend like Amy Bruni. I want to put sparkles on all of our friends. Okay. So Amy Bruni, who's on Kindred Spirits. I don't know if you saw this because you don't watch Instagram shit as much as I do, but she, I guess it happened on Facebook, but then she mentioned it on Instagram that somebody started a rumor that she had a fake eyeball. (laughs) 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 So I said, that's crazy because at this bar I used to work at, I worked there and this was at, I'm not going to say the place, but I worked there for a long time and several years into me working there, one of my coworkers, my co-bartenders pulled me aside and he's like, Hey, did anybody ever tell you about that rumor that goes around this place that you have a fake leg? <laughs> I'm like, a fake leg? <laughs> I'm like, excuse me? He's like, yeah, there's this rumor that goes around that you either have like a metal or a wooden leg. <laughs> I'm like, first of all, that's the best rumor I've ever heard about myself ever. But I'm like, I've worn skirts or shorts here before and I have a leg. But anyway, so I DM'd Amy and I'm like, I think we're in a pirate club now. <laughs> like, if you don't have an eye and I don't have a leg, then we're pirates. So that's the story. <laughs> Did she respond to that? Oh, yeah. She's like, I'm super down, definitely in the club. Why would people think she has a fake eye? I don't know. Why do people talk about people they don't know? That reminds me of this. What's your best comeback? I just love the comeback where you repeat what the fuck they just said. So their own words back at them? Yeah. 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 I like, for some reason, I don't know why I find this so funny, (laughs) but I, I, I don't do it anymore because on Twitter and social media like I don't know how well it comes across but I do still do it in person when I used to see people in person (laughs) but I will say okay Potsy I don't know why that's so funny to me (laughs) nobody knows who Potsy Weber is anymore from happy days and I I know who he is you do maybe but like no one no one knows what that means so when I say it on Twitter like okay Potsy it doesn't Mm -hmm. fly I all of my references are from before I was born so I don't know how to fix that everything was better before I was born in the wrong time I wish I was born in the 30s or 40s or 50s oh you don't I mean I don't socially economically no aesthetically yes I don't know what kind of sense that makes so that's the thing, right? So this is conversations that I have with my sister. Like when I say that too, like the fact that I wear like ties and sweaters and hats and stuff yeah. like that, that's the, honestly like the the privilege of white people looking back and saying like, well, I'll take that good stuff, but I'll leave behind all of that fucking terrible nightmare stuff. Yeah. I know. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, I'm fully tattooed. I own my own business. I own my own house. And then I'm like, oh, if I lived in the 50s, like, guess fucking what? None of that would be a thing. I wouldn't have my own bank account. I wouldn't be able to vault. Like, what? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I hold this, like, picture in my head of how cute everything was. And Because it's all seen through the lens of Hollywood, because we we're experiencing it through the lens of movies, which is archetypal and beautiful, and it's seen through a director's eye. But it's all cast. Also, the other thing too, it's all cast through like the male gaze. Like it's all the directors who are all men, except for Ida Lupino, who did like great work. But like, it's all of this. Guys are tough, and girls always look sexy and everybody gets along and if the girl does like but that's the other thing too like if the girl doesn't like it the guy's gonna take her anyway and then she's gonna love it on top of it if men today then there still are treated women the way that they treated them in the 30s and 40s that's fucking problem that you can't do that anymore i talk about that at my kennedy lectures when i talk about people say like oh oswald used to beat his wife he was a terrible person no it was the 1950s everybody beat their fucking wives that yes he was a terrible person because he beat his wife but everybody beat their fucking wife everybody on the warren commission beat their fucking wife that's just what you did and it's a nightmare it's insane to think about if anybody laid a hand on me 
first of all, they would be dead. I would find three of my friends and they would be fucking dead. And I wouldn't put up with it. I don't know. It's crazy to think that like women didn't have a say in anything or didn't have any upper hand. Like I can't even remotely 1% of my person even think about what that feels like. There's no way. I think about this all the time in that same sense. I was in a super abusive relationship for like three years with a woman who abused me. Yeah. And I think about, so when our relationship ended, she had I woken me up one night by hitting me with a Ziploc bag full of D batteries. There were a bunch of D batteries in a Ziploc bag and I was sleeping and she started hitting me in the head with them. And I grabbed the bag and I threw them across the room and I stood up out of bed and I grabbed her shoulders and threw her up against the wall. And I was like, this relationship's over. And I walked out of the house and that was the last time I saw her. But I think about like, I still feel bad about grabbing her shoulders and throwing her up against the wall. And I think about a time in a, in the world and there still is it still goes on it's not gone where a husband just fucking punches a wife in the face yeah yeah and the thing is is it's like it's not solved like it still goes on yeah i don't know if it's obviously it's because you're a good human but also i feel like a lot of the witchcraft stuff and occult stuff is very much like what you put out is what you get back and you would never harm anybody. You would never harm an animal or a person. And I don't know if that's inherent, you know, like not even trying, you wouldn't do that. Not now. I mean, there was a time. What's crazy is that relationship happened after I changed into the person I am now. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those prototypical situations where it was like, I thought I could make her better. Yeah. Which the relationship wasn't going to work because that that was an underlying cause. Like I thought I was going to make her a better person, but all she was doing was like dragging me into her bullshit and mm-hmm. making me worse. Mm-hmm. And but I feel like if I hadn't gone through my experience that changed me, I feel like that relationship could still be going on, but one of us, her or I, would just be dead right now. Yeah. And I feel like those relationships go on to this day with different people. Like there are people who are together because of, I I used to talk all the time about love by proximity. Like I think that there are a lot of people who are married to the person they're married to and spend their whole life with the person that they're with only because that person was nearby. 100%, yep. I think that all the time I'm like, what if my person's in like India? I don't fucking know. It's so weird that like, and lazy that people end up with somebody who lives a mile from them like do you don't know all the people (laughs) but you know the argument for the argument for that i think about that too all the time the argument for that is people always say like well the universe pushed us together at the same time too pushed you together (laughs) at the same time too like i worked at uh this one place and at this place that i worked at there were multiple divorces and remarriages that happened at that place where people at that place met while they were married to different people and then got married at that place. And it was yeah. love by proximity. Like they weren't, they had met their original wife or husband or partner at their first job. Then they came to this job and met a new person, got divorced from the old person and married the new person. And I was like, this is love by proximity. This is people getting married because they're around this person eight hours a day at work and it's easy. And again, like you said, my person, my one true perfect love might be in fucking Angolia, like in Russia. I know, I know. And plus, I'm old now, and I don't care. I don't care. Did you um, see my tweet the other day about pancakes? That was absolutely true. I did. And then somebody posted a picture of dolls dressed up as pancakes. Yeah. <laughs> it was devolved very quickly. Um, people always have a, a queued up response for you for some reason. But I feel like I went, so you know that I've performed a lot of weddings and stuff like that. Yeah. Over the years performing weddings, couples all of a sudden started seeing me as an actual like reverend or minister. Mm-hmm. And so they started asking my advice about politics or like not politics, about marriage. Mm-hmm. And the only advice that I could ever give them was I had some tips and tricks. Here's some tips and tricks for marriage first. Tips <laughs> and tricks for marriage. Wait, 
my first advice and then my tips and tricks. My advice was when you get married to someone, if you love them and they're your perfect person, the only thing that should change after you get married is that you don't talk about getting married anymore. Yeah. That's it. That's the only thing that should change. Yeah. Like you shouldn't become a better person. They shouldn't become a better person. You shouldn't become better people. You should do that. Obviously, if that's what, as you grow and evolve, you should become a better person and they should become a better person, but not because you're married to each other. If you love each other, you should still be on your own journey, your own quest. And the only thing that should change is that you don't talk about getting married anymore. And maybe that's a little idealistic. That's fine. Anyway, here's your tips and tricks for, uh, that I give brides and grooms uh, for the wedding day. One, grooms, shave with a razor the day before your wedding and then shave on the day of your wedding with an electric razor. I have seen so many grooms that have nicks and cuts on their face because they get nervous on the mm -hmm. day of their wedding. So they shave with a razor to get a close shave on the day of their wedding. And then they bleed and they have like shit on their face for photographs, terrible. Two, for brides and grooms. Keep, for grooms, keep chapstick in your pocket and for brides, keep have your bridesmaid hold a chapstick because you get nervous on the day of your wedding and your fingers swell. And so when the, when the wedding happens, before you put the rings on, the groom and the bridesmaid put chapstick on the ring and it'll slide onto your finger so that it doesn't get stuck on your finger and there's no right. like pushing. Look at that. Look at the I've little tips and tricks. Yeah, wow. Also Just turn off your fucking phones. I've performed weddings yeah. in the era of cell phones when groomsmen and bridesmaids phones are going off during the service. Worst. Worst. <laughs> the worst. I'm um, in the midst of like some deep philosophical love shit and all of a sudden it's like baby got back like someone's got their <laughs> ringtone set for fucking baby got back i'm like jesus christ i mean going? maybe you have your ringtone set for that i don't i don't i have my phone set for 1940s telephone your sound on my phone is an old ufo sound and it's so cute do you have psycho set for me what yeah, do you have the theme from psycho is set yeah, for you perfect. yeah <laughs> um i feel like we've been at this almost an hour i like okay obviously my favorite podcast the a side they do a thing when they have guests at the end where they are allowed to say whatever they want or say drop any anything that they're working on or whatever so is there anything you want to say that doesn't have to do with anything or any any shout outs or plugs or anything i don't think so i got my desk today in the mail that i ordered oh my god that's why we couldn't do this podcast earlier because I had to put the desk together. I was putting the desk together when you texted you me. You already put it together? Yeah, it's already put together. Oh my God. I worked well, in a furniture a restoration place. Come on now. You wrote a book recently that people can get on Amazon. Which one? Theoretical Weirdo. That's last year's book. I'm working on a new one. Okay, but it's new. What is the new one? What is the, do you want to talk about this yet? I mean, I can, it's fine. Okay. Because like Theoretical Weirdo, it says volume one mm -hmm. on the top. And so mm -hmm. Theoretical Weirdo is just all of my thoughts. But volume two is Anecdotal Weirdo, where mm -hmm. it's all of my weird stories. Ew. Well, like paranormal stories. It's not, what do you going to have eight volumes of that one? No, I'm, I'm doing a lot of, I'm, I'm doing a lot of the realm of the weird stories, but filling them in with more facts. And mm -hmm. like printing like pictures with them and like original handwritten notes with them and stuff like that. And so Are you gonna do like updates too, like unsolved mysteries. What was that? Are you gonna do like updates too, like unsolved mysteries? Yes. Awesome. Yeah, there's updates to some of them after, since after the podcast went out, there's been more information on some of them. And yeah. then so anecdotal weirdo comes out. Well, will come out probably around like December. Perfect. What about nice. you? Um, ugh, Niall from The Bash is bothering me to listen to this. So I want to say hi to Niall and Pizzi. And I don't know if anybody's going to listen to this, but Jose and Casey and everybody at the A side. I feel MMA like certain, people? Yeah. I feel like certain podcasts have really kept me afloat during the pandemic. Like having no schedule and no life and no friends, like having something to look forward to on like Monday, Wednesday, whatever, like the, the semblance of a schedule or something to look forward to has been so 
important for me. And there's just certain podcasts where I'm like, oh, this, it just feels cozy. Like it's weird to have like a cozy, okay moment amongst what's going on. And I just feel like those people. That's really why I help. wanted to do, that's why I think that, that's why I wanted to do this podcast. And that's why I thought it was important because I've like yeah. every, like even today when we were on web, web crawlers, I was saying like, it's not even a podcast. It's like a telephone call. Like yeah. I just, I miss conversations and having conversations and even being at the bar and overhearing conversations. And yeah. I don't care if anybody deep listens to this podcast, but I want it to be on in the background while they're washing dishes yeah. and being like, oh, those are my friends and they're talking about stuff. Yeah, just to like hear a familiar voice and weird, like maybe topics that you care about or topics that you don't care about. I don't know. Topics that you could care about. I know. Like we missed a lot of paranormal events this year and and uh, instances where we would have seen certain people and it's like, I don't know. I hope this like makes them feel like they hung out with us. I hope so. I think so. Yeah. Is that it? Or did we do it? Is this our first one? Are we done? I think we're probably done. I think so too. I hear Bean whining that he has to go out. Are you going to eat Del Taco? Yeah, I'm going to eat my Del Taco. Are you going to smash episode, it? First episode sponsored by Del Tacos. First episode sponsored by Del Taco. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Smash that like button. Hit that subscribe. <laughs> smash that taco button hit that notification so i know when new ones are posted nope that's not us podcast youtube culture is the worst it's the worst we don't even know what we're doing that's not what we're doing no i don't want to do a podcast like that i don't want us to have tons of like four hundred dollar microphones nope. and nope good lighting and great nope. mixing boards fuck nope. it fuck it Major motion picture studios are making Zoom movies now. Yeah. Host is one of the scariest movies I've watched in the last year. I thought when we did this, I was going to haunt my house. Like, Host. Everybody should watch <laughs> Host, P.S. on Shutter. It's scary as fuck. It is scary. It is scary. I thought it was good. Did you watch Scare Me yet? No. Watch Scare Me. I will. It's good. I have to. All right, we're done. We're gonna keep talking, and I'm gonna smash, smash my like and my Del Taco. Okay. <laughs> good talk. Good talk. We ended a good one. We it wasn't a doom ending. We usually do end on a doom ending. We were headed toward it. Did no. you see us heading toward a doom ending? No. I saw. No. I did. I saw it like ten I mean, minutes ago. I was like, your dark ass relationship hitting, hit, getting hit with batteries. That was dark. But that's what I mean. I saw it heading. I, <laughs> I was <laughs> like, oh, we're gonna end on darkness. <laughs> we turned it around. We talked about Del Tacos. It's fine. All right. All right. Bye, dummy. Bye. Bye.